Kapal induk adalah sebutan untuk kapal perang yang memuat pesawat tempur dalam jumlah besar. Kapal induk merupakan pusat komando untuk pertempuran di laut. Di kapal induk terdapat landasan untuk pesawat tempur terbang dan mendarat. Juga kapal induk adalah rumah bagi kru-kru yang bertugas selama pertempuran di laut. Kapal induk juga dilengkapi persenjataan untuk menghancurkan kapal-kapal musuh atau menembak jatuh pesawat tempur musuh. Dengan fungsinya yang sangat kompleks, maka tak heran ukuran kapal induk sangatlah besar. Jika terjadi pertempuran di laut, menghancurkan atau menenggelamkan kapal induk musuh adalah cara terbaik untuk memenangkan pertempuran. Kali ini kita akan bahas kapal induk terbesar di dunia. USS Enterprise CVN-80. Here's next generation aircraft carrier after USS, USS John F. Kennedy. Enterprise. It's been more than three years since the world's first USS Enterprise adalah kapal induk terbesar di dunia yang pernah diciptakan. Hebatnya lagi kapal induk ini juga merupakan kapal induk pertama yang menggunakan tenaga nuklir. Enterprise was built at Newport News Shipbuilding and christened in September 1960 as the world's first USS Enterprise dibangun pada tahun 1958 hingga 1961 oleh Newport New Ship Building. Kapal induk ini telah digunakan oleh Angkatan Laut Amerika Serikat selama 51 tahun berturut-turut. Makanya tak heran kapal induk ini telah terlibat dalam banyak pertempuran seperti Perang Vietnam dan Perang Korea. USS Enterprise memiliki panjang 342 meter. Dengan ukuran yang besar itu, kapal ini mampu menampung 5.000 orang. Sedangkan untuk pesawat tempur bisa memuat sampai 90 pesawat tempur. Namun normalnya hanya diisi oleh 60 pesawat tempur. USS Enterprise atau juga dijuluki PTI ini akhirnya pensiun pada tahun 2012 lalu. Ini merupakan kapal induk Amerika dengan pengoperasian yang paling lama. The ship is currently scheduled to replace USS Dwight D. Eisenhower. The ship provided a record 51 consecutive years of service to the Navy and completed its final deployment in 2012, just before being inactivated. The ship was officially decommissioned on February 3, 2017. Now a data system from the Enterprise will find new life on the Navy's newest aircraft, the future USS John F. Kennedy. The in USQ-167 Common Data Link System CDLS, was salvaged from the Enterprise and refurbished and updated by Naval Undersea Warfare Center Division, Keyport Detachment San Diego's Fleet Test and Evaluation Center. The system allows aircraft carriers to receive process, and evaluate data from land and shipboard bases USW aircraft. Live testing, consisting of both on-deck and in-flight operations, were successfully conducted, proving the next-generation common data link system increased capabilities were operationally sound. This proven upgrade is now slated to be retrofitted on all US aircraft carriers, explained Fleet Test and Evaluation Center Engineering Technician Dave McKay in a Navy release. The Navy says it saved about $1.8 million by not having to purchase a brand new unit. The system is expected to be installed on the Kennedy next year. It's not the first piece of the Enterprise to find new life on other aircraft carriers. One of the anchors from the Big E was installed on the USS George Washington last year as it undergoes mid-life refueling and overhaul at Newport News Shipbuilding. The port side anchor from Enterprise was installed on the USS Abraham Lincoln in 2014 as the Lincoln underwent its own refueling period in Newport News. The name Enterprise will also live on. CVN-80, 
a Ford class carrier currently under construction in Newport News, will carry on the name. Shortly before USS Enterprise went to the breakers, a new ship bearing the name was laid down, CVN-65, the world's first nuclear aircraft carrier. The latter USS Enterprise served for 50 years, before decommissioning in 2012. Another USS Enterprise, CVN-80, is scheduled for completion by 2025. An altogether unforeseeable event immortalized the name even more. In 1965, Gene Roddenberry gave the name Enterprise to the starship of his series Star Trek. Just as CV-6 survived combat situations that destroyed other carriers, NCC-1701 would survive wildly improbable scenarios. The wild, and unpredictable, success of that series and its spin-offs would lead to a variety of other enterprises, each with the same improbable success as their World War II namesake. Throughout the ship's development, lawmakers have been watching for cost overruns. In a February report titled, Navy Ford CVN-78 Class Aircraft Carrier Program, Background and Issues for Congress, the Congressional Research Service noted that estimated procurement costs of CVN-78, CVN-79 and CVN-80 have grown by 24.7%, 23.2% and 15.1%, respectively, since the fiscal year 2008 budget request was submitted. Some of the main sources of risk include the electromagnetic launch system, the advanced arresting gear and the dual-band radar. To lower costs, the Navy opted to award Newport News Shipbuilding a two-carrier contract last year. The decision is expected to save the service about $4 billion.